Hello everyone! Today we are watching a very special uh, ripoff show. I know we've done like a lot of ripoff bootleg things on this channel before, but this is definitely another one. But luckily joining me today is my good friend Rob of the Ink Tank, five-time Oscar winner and creator of the webcomic Five Years Later. Why, thank you. Uh, I can't legally tell you what those Oscars are for because then uh, Adam here will get demonetized. So this was your idea, just to clarify. We really wanted to do a series on like rip-off Ben 10 shows and movies uh, that we could find because like, my God, are there so many of them. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially with the There's merchandise, people, which is a it's, whole other again, topic in a itself it's, it's, but i mean i see ben 10 rip off this and that like everywhere it's, it's kind of unavoidable so i just figured it'd be fun to fuck with you and try to finesse you into doing this collab with me to force you to watch them and it looks like i've succeeded <laughs> So ben 7 is like an indonesian live action ripoff of ben 10 I think we're pretty sure. So we found a playlist on YouTube of, and I shit you not, <laughs> 250 videos. But like every episode is split into like three 15 minute long parts. So we watched the first and second episode and then we wanted to get like a proper range of the show. So we skipped ahead to two other random ones and then the finale. And then we yeah. watched it and I kind of wish we didn't. <laughs> I found this Lost Media Archive page, which is actually translated off the official website of the makers of this. Yeah, just this l incredibly long paragraph trying to explain <laughs> what this is. It's, it's um, like a whole novel. <laughs> yeah, we, which we could get into, but essentially <laughs> this kid, Ben, lives in a what's called a hermitage, which I'm assuming is just like a boarding school. At least it started out where like there were like magic users or something, like something out of Naruto. Like people can already do backflips and like shoot things out of their hands and whatnot far before the the whole belt comes yeah. Uh, along but yeah ben gets this magic belt which at first allows him to turn into seven different things i guess <laughs> i want i i have the urge to say aliens but it is it's, it's spirits costumed men i'm struggling to to describe something so simple but if you were to ever watch this you would understand why <laughs> part of what's in the description that i found and i i have a feeling this is going to be the only thing we're going to know for sure the professors of the white pigeon hermitage who were imprisoned wanted to open the secrets of the science of a rare book namely the book without letters i don't know there's there's some spirits that came out of a book that fuse into ben and then he magically gets this belt which is top tier Power Ranger design, like something straight out of Power Rangers. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a repurposed toy. The book never comes back, at least I don't think so. The, the first episode I remember was like five hours of Ben being like a complete asshole to everyone around him for like no reason. He's just like pranking everyone at the school. He does save a monkey though at some point. The first episode starts with like actual Race Against Time CGI. And is yeah. it like the monkey gonna get trampled or something? Yeah, so the ben, monkey's like... gonna get trampled and Ben saves the monkey with like his fucking superhuman abilities. Can he just do that? <laughs> I guess. The belt yeah, handicapped him. <laughs> it did, because once he has the belt, he doesn't do anything anymore. I'm laughing because later on the monkey disappears. The first episode makes it out to be like this monkey is like gonna be his sidekick. Mm. And then later on, it's, it's just gone. He's um, in the poster, he's gotta be important. He's on the poster too, yeah. But I don't know, by episode 45, they said fuck the monkey, I guess. He died in like episode 37 and we just didn't know yeah. this. <laughs> he gets in trouble for his pranks and he's sentenced to clean some room with haunted books. Oh, is uh, that was... what it was? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. And then walks in there and he just steals the book. And then the, the beds start flying. And then he does the smartest move that any like horror movie protagonist should do. And he just takes the book and fucking throws it away <laughs> and says, I'm done with it. He tries to burn it. <laughs> yeah, he does all these different things to try to get rid of the book and the book's not going anywhere. It's like a fucking um, death note. He can't get rid of it. It just keeps ending yeah. up. And then all of the, all of the, I'm going to call them aliens. They're not. Yep. But they all come out of the book and they stand in a row and they like, I assume they threaten him or something. And Ben's like, fuck you. And he holds his hand out and he like absorbs all of them. And that's what gives him the belt. A at least we're both clear. That's what actually happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. Th this is already all over the place. Before Ben even gets the book and like, we do get to see all seven of the the beings so far. Uh, out of those seven, which which one did you like the most? 
if you could even differentiate them. Do you want to like go through them? Because I'm like struggling sure. to remember them. I did write them down. The only yeah. one that's coming to mind is there was like straight up just heat blast. Like it wasn't even discreet. It was just like heat yeah. blast with a wrestler mask. They added like a like a green screen fire effect every time he's on screen. Then there was the accelerate one who could also, oh, yeah. who also had weather powers or something. Like he was wind, he was lightning. I, I really struggled to figure out what his basis was. None of the powers were consistent at any point, I don't think. Maybe they establish it in like the Ben 7 lore later on. But of what we saw, they were just yeah. pulling powers out of their ass at like any given time. Then there was the Hawk one. There was the... Yeah, he was like straight up Hawkman. Yeah, it's Hawkman. Basically Hawkman. There was one that looked like he was trying to cosplay Shark Boy, but he didn't have aquatic powers. He just, you know, he had like the, the metal, not, not the metal, the gray suit or whatever. But we didn't even see like five of them in action at any point. Cause like in the first episode, Ben turns into Heat Blast like 13 times like every yeah, single oh time God. it was a problem and like maybe that was like he doesn't know how to turn into any of the other ones yet that was driving me crazy like by the end i was literally like if i see that fucking fire guy one more time <laughs> super inappropriately too like if if i saw whatever commotion was going down that he saw my first thought would not be the guy that sets everything on fire <laughs> <laughs> There's the one that looks like the thing, except he has like hollow eyes. So it's like the scariest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I'm glad that we didn't see much of him. And then there was the one that looked like way big. The one that was like- Yeah, yellow the yellow way big one. Three of them are Ben 10 aliens. If you want to count that like stink fly thing, sure, that's four. Hawkman, the thing, and just a fucking guy in like, in a gray costume. That's, that's our yeah. roster. And they all have like their own little intros, like, like Power Rangers intros. And they had the names, but like the fucking file on YouTube was so low quality that I couldn't even read what it says. The bullies roll up in a car, which confirms this does play, take place in modern times. I was confused about that. His first real outing as an alien is when like the worst fucking driver in the world has like a bunch of oil at the back of his truck. I can't recall if something happened to him or if he just like spun out. The show seems to be notorious for like an insane chain reaction of bad luck. I had to write it all down because I was in such disbelief. It was like, the vehicle loses some barrels, then it crashes, then it lights the forest on fire, and then the fire <laughs> spreads into some nearby fireworks. It launches a firework missile directly at Ben with heat-seeking vengeance, stabs him in the butt a few times, and then he eventually rides the missile like a horse, falls to the ground, and then the car explodes. Ben Tennyson has Vilgax. Ben Seven's overarching villain is like fate. <laughs> yeah. Or like cosmic events. Ben Seven versus the universe. <laughs> Essentially, it all ends with the very first threat that Ben has to deal with, just like with the actual Ben 10, is a forest fire. And there's like yeah. this shot of like the girl that's just lying there dead with all the green screen fire around her. Oh yeah, the girls. Whose kid is this? Like, why is there, why Gwen? is there a girl in the woods? Gwen is it meant to be? <laughs> yeah, we, we could call her Gwen. I did not expect her to stay there the whole series. One thing I did find funny though, is since this is on YouTube, the Indonesian channel is constantly putting the, the subscribe to their channel at the worst <laughs> time. Yeah, they did. All I can think to myself is like, subscribe to watch this girl die. One last thing we could comment, uh, just since it's still in the first part is, allegedly Ben 7 is filled with a lot of like, religious morals. And I didn't pick Allegedly. up on any of that. <laughs> yeah. Shows around this time would always do a lot better if they infused it with religious morals. And maybe they were there and I just couldn't understand it, but I would not watch this and gather anything that would even resemble a religious moral from Ben 7. Maybe the magic belt is like God's way of punishing Ben or something. I don't know. Like you have to endure <laughs> this entire series for the rest of your life, Ben. You have to be Ben 7. <laughs> it's cursing him. Oh my God, that's so funny. So yeah, the second episode or like the arc or whatever. He goes to like a carnival and instead of like again, our Ben 10 had Dr. Animo by this point. Ben 7's main villain of this episode is like a guy going around and fucking with every machine he can find for like no reason other than just to ruin everybody's day. And to solve it, Ben turns into Heat Blast every single time to just shoot fire at it and like hope for the yeah. best. 
that like no one dies. He he also made that <laughs> fire chain sort of thing. Yeah, so he's out here making constructs. I'm like, damn, this guy's more powerful than he blasts. Yeah, he blasts fucking wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like him just turning into the same alien and shooting stuff is more realistic as to what a 10 year old would actually do. Ben Seven was going for realism here. That That's what it was. No, I, I'm looking at my notes. A lot of it is just me complaining about the fire dude. Like in episode <laughs> two, I was so starved for some actual action because I can't understand their dialogue. And when he was about to use the belt, there was a part of me that was like hyped. That was yeah. like, why am I so hyped over this? And then he turned into the fucking fire guy again and ruined it. I was like, are you kidding me? We never got to a point where he like used a different alien. So right. we skipped ahead to like episode 44 in the hopes that by that point, maybe Ben will have realized that he has like a couple other aliens to choose from. The mysterious girl who is in danger from episode one is there for the rest of the series. I got the idea to start throwing the descriptions into Google Translate just to see what would happen. And they describe her as Ben's girlfriend. So they're a thing, I guess. I don't want to call her Gwen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, after a while they get they get a bit of a budget and they're like, you know, we can start building sets. Yeah, so I was going to say the production value definitely increased in this episode. We went straight from like just a regular guy at an amusement park to actual fucking aliens. So the UFO starts terrorizing the city, I guess. Jordan Peele be damned. They beat him to it. They, they start getting chased down, but every time the crowd catches up to them, they don't even attack. They just kind of like pat them on the head a little bit. So yeah. like, why are, you, why are you running? I'm so excited for you to say this next bit. Ben unlocks a new alien form and it's Iron Man. <laughs> And at first, I'm like, okay, so he gets an Iron Man-like alien. Until the girl literally calls him Iron Man. And that's why, sorry, it caught me so off guard. Because, like, as you said, the guys were just, like, fucking patting them on the head. And then the second that he goes Iron Man, they start, <laughs> like, fucking punching him in the face. Gwen gets like her powers in this episode, like her magic powers. So they, they didn't forget that. So it clearly is supposed yeah. to be Gwen. Now the girl can do magic, I'm assuming, which feels weird. But then I remember in the first episode, they were already doing some crazy shit. Like the very first thing you see Ben do is he does a backflip and then there's like this energy aura burst. So I'm already like, this kid's already a fucking G. Before that happens, the, the aliens were twerking at the humans to trigger them or something. They just turned around and started like shaking their ass at him, like come and get it. So now we're skipping up to episode 59, uh, which is a crossover episode with a series that doesn't exist. This was my favorite, personally. This is where Ben 7 peaked for me. So obviously in like the 40 or so episodes that we missed, they gave up on Ben 10 already. They put Iron Man in there and they're like, that's not enough. So not Gwen is training her magic powers or so and burns a hole in a tree. And I was like, oh, okay, well, there's magma in a tree, I guess. But it turns out it's not magma, it's a portal. And then they get transported to what feels like an entirely different show. Like what once they step through that portal, everything is shot differently. Uh, the music's different. There's like no goofy sounds anymore. And there there's the Power Rangers. The Power Rangers are there. I'm not super familiar with Power Rangers, but I am like 99% sure the bad guy in this episode is just straight up the bad guy from Power Rangers. And he also has, there's like later in the episode, they try and sneak into his bedroom and there's like a sign on the door that just straight up says Lord Zed on it. So it is just like straight up just him. Oh, and all the Power Rangers sound super young too as if they're Ben's age, but you <laughs> yeah, never see right. them with their helmets off, ever. Even when they're not fighting crime, even the even Lord Zed there, he's chilling in his bed, sound asleep in full body armor. He got a new alien in that one too. He got the Flash. We're just stealing from everyone at this point. I'm pretty sure they just like go on Amazon and see what costumes are available. And they're like, that's it. That's the new alien. That is the exact vibe they all gave me was like those non-copyright vague character costumes that you'd find at like a $2 store. So that anyway, that was where it really peaked. Uh, so that was why the final episode was so disappointing to me. Now, just to preface, we're not really sure if this is the finale because like the whole playlist is like out of order for some reason, but they were the last three videos in the playlist so i'm just gonna assume this is how the show ends yeah not a great not a great finale not a great finale if it is the finale which it probably isn't but, but somehow this man starts turning into a monkey so ben and gwen are on the search for the cure maybe and they come
come across a statue and it's clearly just a guy standing there. I'm going to assume this was probably like their overarching Vilgax final villain sort of thing with just three shirtless guys with guns. That was the main villain of Ben 7 the whole time. They sneak into their headquarters and they get attacked by like a bunch of CGI helicopters and jets. This fucking episode is so weird, dude. I have a note here that says like, literally nothing could have prepared me for seeing him turn into a straight up elephant. Like everything was some semblance of a superhero or an alien or something. And then we're 85 episodes in and Ben's an elephant. He also turns into this like remote control tank thing, which is like a smaller version of one that he fights at the beginning of the episode. I was really confused about that at first. I had to rewind. Like I, yeah, I thought the same thing. I saw the tank and I was like, okay, whatever the fuck this is. And then later on they start talking to it. And I was like, wait, and I had to rewind and catch him transform into this tank. And he turns into the Hulk too, doesn't he? He does. He turns right? into the, the what what you can classify as the Hulk. The the elephant already threw me through a loop and then the tank showed up and I'm like, Ben 7 can be anything. <laughs> I was trying to find as much information on this as I could. And I found like what I think is like Indonesian Wikipedia. And it turns out like all of this was done over a couple of months. What, April to October? In five months, they made 85 episodes of this shit. That's like, that's super fast. Yeah. I found the Instagram of the main actor, who's Ben Seven himself. Damn, he's like um, hot now. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. I sent him a, a DM trying to get an <laughs> interview today. Uh, only time will tell if he responds. So uh, yeah, I mean, after watching all this, as much as a, an incredible, indescribable mind fuck that this series is, I'm struggling to like, genuinely dislike it because when i watch it i kind of like i get like these vibes of like the kind of videos i would make growing up where you would just like take a camera out when you're playing with your friends and you're doing like the cheap like cg effects that you're able to find for free on youtube or something that's that's what this series felt like to me is just like it's just nuts that it's like there's a whole studio backing this like this <laughs> is what they made this was this was i can you say professionally produced, I guess? Absolutely. A part of me is super curious as to what the rest of the show could be like if we just pick like a bunch of random episodes out of a hat and Iron Man and the Power Rangers and the Hulk showed up in a Ben 10 ripoff. <laughs> Before we started watching any of this, Rob had the idea that we could get in contact with like some translators who actually speak Indonesian uh, to maybe like fill in some of the gaps of what we didn't understand and try and get like some explanation for all of this. I cannot wait to find out how wrong we were about every single thing that happened in the show. Well, we're back. I'm so excited to go through these. It looks like the first list of explanations is just what each of the alien transformations or whatever really are, which is great because that was hard to follow. Yeah. So first is the fire one and he's called Obar, Obor Human, the power of spewing dragon fire. Oh, that's fucking dope. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Second one is Ice Human. Great name. So this is the freezing guy who I don't think we actually saw an episode where this one's used. Yeah, we forgot to bring him up when we were listing the aliens. So I <laughs> just completely <laughs> forgot about him. So did the show. Yeah, yeah, true. Then we got catfish slash fish human. So this is a this is Rip Jaws. Oh my God, I didn't even put that together. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that, that makes so much more I wish sense. Which we saw this one. The accelerate one we saw a lot is human typhoon. Mm -hmm. The way big looking one, the yellow way big one that we also never saw is called Ball Human. And he <laughs> rolls up like a ball. I wish we saw this one. All the cool ones we missed out on. Yeah, I know. What about Hawkman? Please tell me that's just like bird human. It literally is bird human. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the rock guy who we didn't see is called Rock Human, surprisingly. No! What? I asked for a, a translation of the scene where all of the, the ghost aliens form into the belt, and I did get that. It says they're the seven enchanted warriors of this enchanted book which is the one that kept following him. Uh -huh. And they said, you burned our home. You must suffer the consequences. So he really was cursed. That's pretty fucking, we, we nailed that. <laughs> we did, we got that. That seemed obvious. I was like, there's no way this is like a good thing that's happening to him yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he was cursed by the seven enchanted warriors because he burned their home. So the belt is just there. Like yeah. we, we get to know everything but what, what the belt is. 
It's just a visual indicator of his eternal torment. Yeah, the seven <laughs> warriors were always styling. Yeah, that's all we were able to really get some info on. So that answers some questions, which I'm happy about, but that's also somehow yeah. enhances Ben Seven's mystery even more. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I try to learn any more about Ben Seven, I'm just gonna drive myself crazy. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments that tell us. I um I posted about it on Twitter, and like a concerning amount of people said they grew up with it. So I'm uh, I'm sure. Oh we're wow. Be yeah, it's a lot more we well known than I thought. We're gonna be judged by all the Ben 7 fans in this video. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this absolute trip <laughs> as much as we did. You can check out us watching another bootleg movie over on our channel, The Ink Tank. It's even worse. We're on Twitter at It's The Ink Tank. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up, so, you know, check it out. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for having me on once again. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for, thank you for making me watch this absolute masterpiece <laughs> oh of course i couldn't think of anyone better to suffer this with me i'm never responding to your messages again